Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Table Golf Association. This is a golf game that plays with one to eight players and or teams, takes about 30 to 60 minutes to play or more if you want and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Tabletop Golf or Table Golf Association, you are going to be creating this fairway here. You are going to be then uh, choosing certain aspects, whether it be uh, your golfer or where you're going to be placing your tee and how how many holes and uh, how many how much how many what, what the par is so how many times you can shoot the uh, the golf ball here and try and get it into the hole there and um, you're also going to be partaking in whether there's wind or not a player's turn they're going to set it they're going to flick it and then they're going to try and get as close to the hole as they can without avoiding all those nasty hazards and whatnot once the hole has been completed the next player will go and so on and so forth and then of course the next player will get an opportunity after the hole is done to make a new hole set a new par set a new tee etc etc and you can go and play you can play up to three, six, nine, twelve holes. It's really all up to you. And then you'll tally up your score, and whoever has the high, uh, however has the lowest score, I believe, at the end of the game, is the winner. All right. So let's go ahead and explain how to set the game up, then how to play, and of course our review. Okay. Setting the game Table Golf Association up is pretty simple. You have to select a player. They're going to then create the field. They're going to place their tee in the hole and everything in between. And you can make it as large as you want. The only main rule is that you have to make sure that the ball can go into the hole so there has to be connecting tiles to get there and you have to also set the par so how many uh, shots a player is going to need to get the associated amount of hits into the hole without losing points and you're going to be uh, designating that by checking with lines I would say so one and then two and then three so you say okay this par three and then you're also going to set uh, the T you can set in the blue area the most difficult uh, the yellow or the red uh, for the easiest and it's really up to you in this game there's a lot of customization options uh, after that they have the board is then set up and the players have been designated their tee. They're going to attempt to flick with their designated hand, their best hand, the, the uh, puck slash golf ball across the tiles. They'll be flicking them and they'll be attempting to get into the holes. Now, uh, in association with the Table Golf Association game, you can also choose and set up to use these guys here. These are golf clubs. If you um, have a disability or you cannot use your fingers all that well, you can have everybody use these little golf clubs clubs here and you can hit the, the yeah you can hit with these guys here which makes the game a little easier supposedly uh, it's up to you really um, and of course make sure that you have the win card or the wind dial facing out and you have every player start with a golfer the last thing you're going to need to do is get the scorecard and place it in front of all players. Designate each player's name on the corners here. Then, of course, the holes. You'll number them and you will add what the T is, whether it's red, white, or blue. And the bottom, for every time you set up a new game, you're going to designate how many shots for par. So in this case, I put three for this specific map. And that's it. You're pretty much ready to go. There's a player aid or player reference if needed and additional tiles for when you set up the next hole. So how to play the game. How to play the game is actually rather simple. The T has been selected and it was selected as white so that is where the first player is going to place their puck slash golf ball. Uh, then after that you're going to check and see what your max fly is. Max fly is generally I believe seven tiles and of course you can go ahead and look on this player aid here and check and this is the fairway so it's seven which means the farthest that this puck can go is going to be seven tiles across the board. Um, then you're going to go ahead and check to see the penalty of the specific area. So some tiles are going to have penalty if you hit it out of bounds or in the water and are in a ravine, you're going to have to kind of take it back. Um, if you hit in the sandbox, you're going to hit it slower or with your thumb or with your opposing hand or with your middle finger on your opposing hand, making the shots a little challenging. But if you have none of those problems, then you're going to go ahead and simply begin by rolling the wind die. You're never going to roll the wind die if you're one space away from the tile you need to get to, which is the little hole here. But otherwise, you're going to take your little wind targeting system here. You're going to place it facing yourself. You are going to spin the little spinner and roll the die. Now, if the die ends up with a wonderful little sun here, you will not have wind. However, if you do roll a wind symbol, that is going to indicate that your ball is going to move one space in the direction of the dial here based on where the target is and the player. So you can kind of designate how you want to organize this. This is the target which you're going for. I am the player. I spin it and then the, the ball is going to move. So for instance, if this was the direction on the left hand side and I flick this and it went to here, the ball is going to slide down because that is a ramp and then you're going to move the ball one space in this direction 
uh, because of the wind. However, if it's a double wind space, it will actually move two spaces, which could end you in some trouble and land you in like a water space. And you can also kind of time and judge your movements just before you're hitting it because you're going to roll the dice and the um, tracker here uh, before you flick this guy here. So you can kind of, based on the wind, decide where you want to hit it. And then after that, you keep going. So that first player is going to actually play throughout the entire hole. And if you're playing the basic mode, you can actually do it twice. And whatever your best set of shots is, is the one that you can record onto this track here. So if you score, it's normal golf rules, uh, a hole in one, then you get, there's no points, which is perfect. You don't wanna get points. If you go over par, it's plus one for each over. And if you go under, it's minus one from your previous total score. And you're always trying to get minus if you can in these games. Then every other player will do the exact same thing. Don't forget to note that you have a character that is going to detail what specific abilities that you may have that you may be able to use for this map here. And uh, there's also additionally some pro rules that will include things like drawing, fading, slicing, and hooking that you can play with or not, depending on how skilled you are. I'm not skilled enough to play with them. Played this a few times and I was not able to successfully do these, so I just kind of played the more basic rules. Uh, but I did get a little bit to the pro area. But regardless, that's how you play the game. Set all this up, set the puck, play the hole, and then each player will do the same thing, always checking to see your max fly, any of your penalties, and um, flicking with the correct specific thumb or finger or whatever, trying to get it into this hole here and scoring afterwards and setting up a new hole, going throughout as many holes as you guys would like. At the end of the game, whoever has the uh, least amount of points is the winner, just like in golf. And that's basically the game. Let's go ahead and talk about it. All right, so let's talk about the TGA, the Table Golf Association. This is a dexterity golf game. You are going to be setting up your different holes. They're all customizable and they have different types of hazards and dangers that are going to be across the board. And your objective is to flick the puck slash golf ball across the field, land in the appropriate areas and get the puck into the hole unlike me. And if you can do that under par, you score negative points, which is what you want. It's kind of like the game hearts. You're trying to get the lowest score possible. And for every single time you get that nice hole in one, that's going to be a, a sweet, sweet feel because you're going to get all those additional negative points. Uh, and of course it changes based on the pro mode and the basic mode. The basic mode is going to give you a lot more room for error. You'll be able to uh, try and do the hole more than once and score your best appropriate like shots. Um, you'll be able to use this little thing here, which is actually quite nice. Um, it gives you kind of more of a distinct shot. Wow, that was an amazing one. That's one shot there and then two shots. Bam! So it's a lot easier, I guess, than your finger after all. Um, but you can choose to play that mode or you can choose to play the more complex mode where you're using different types of fingers and thumbs and whatnot. In the basic mode, you actually just use a different hand as opposed to your main hand, uh, which does change a bit, but not as much as the more complex mode. The wind is also a high factor in the game. Whenever you're shooting past that one spot mark, if you're ever past that one space here, you can be rolling this die here, spinning this little needle here, and you can get even more complex with do the draws, birdies, slices, and hooks, which will angle the ball in certain ways after the wind has been appropriately rolled. It's also nice of the player reference card. This explains all the different hazards and dangers and how far you can hit them in basic areas. Maybe like if you're in a sand trap here, you're not gonna be able to hit it very far as opposed to if you're in somewhere like a fairway or the starting tee area, you'll have more of an opportunity to. There's a lot of tiles too. There's all these guys here and all these guys here. There's different types of holes too and different types of spaces where you can create a really, really big map if you want and increase the par to an even larger size. This game can be played as a party game and a team game. And really, in my opinion, you can play this game with as many players as you you would like. I love dexterity games. I love games that are simple to play but have a unique concept to master and this one does that because not only are you building the course but you're also defining the rules of play and how and where you're going to hit the ball which adds a lot. And don't forget of course your characters here. Like I have Donald Driver here. Uh, I can I can move a tee shot one full space forward when it comes to rest. So after I've hit my tee I can move it one space forward, and spaces are going to be based on these little sides here. So for instance, this is a two space one, a two space one, a one space one, and don't forget that they also have a front and a back, of course, which is nice. Uh, the artwork is minimal, but I think minimalist artwork for a game like this is important, so you can focus on what's important, which is where and when you can hit the certain balls and how they work, and of course, how large the playing area is. The high quality pieces are excellent. I love how thick these pieces are. You're not going to have any problems with that. Uh, one negative can be the fact that 
that, like I said before in a bunch of my other videos with the big dexterity games, this table is lopsided due to the fact that the house kind of slamps on a slope. And if that's the case, you're going to need to get a leveler and make sure it's very balanced because otherwise you're going to constantly see this uh, ball kind of drift off one way or the other. So you need to make sure that you're playing on the flattest playing surface possible or available. Um, but overall, this is an excellent little game. I really, really enjoyed this thing here. And when I saw it before I even had a chance to play it, I knew I'd like this game uh, because I enjoy dexterity games with a little bit of luck, a little bit of skill, and a nice mix of customization. Kind of like the game Catacombs has a customization option as well. This one has a lot of that though. This is probably my favorite dexterity sports game I have ever played. Yes, I would say that. I really, really, really enjoy this one here. I'd like to see all the different additional Kickstarter benefits. I know there's going to be unique tiles that will be included in the game that you can utilize like a gator space or a bear space. It will take the ball away and make you score points that you might not want to score in the game. Um, and that's all wonderful and great. More stuff is always better. <laughs> of course, it comes with a little trophy to signify your win on social media. <laughs> I could take or leave the trophy, I suppose, as long as I've got the main game here. If you're interested in a game that involves golf, that involves dexterity, and a lot of customization, then Table Golf Association is going to be the game for you. I highly recommend it for those of you who like it. My minor gripes about it are, like I said, the slanted table and maybe a little bit of the graphic design. I think some certain things can be reworked a little nicer. Um, maybe this spinner here, but like overall, it just works so well that I really can't complain when playing Table Golf Association. So you should go ahead and take a look down below. Link in the description for the game on Kickstarter if you'd like to pick this one up. I think you're gonna like this game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Table Golf Association. If you're interested, there's a link, like I said before. You can also go ahead and check out our uh, website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to also go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And of course, the bell notification button. Like this video, comment on this video, share this video, it all greatly does help. Every Sunday we do a live stream, and this one I think is gonna hit one of our next ones because I think it'll show off great as to the type of game it is and how fun it is, and I can show you guys the top down on it. And we'll do that on Twitch, on YouTube, and on Facebook. And I think you will have a lot of fun watching us play this game, and maybe it'll be something that makes, makes you more interested in picking up so you can see just how enjoyable it is to try and flick these little these little pucks around the the, the, the playing area. Anyway guys, that's all I got for you this time and as always I look forward to playing some table golf with you next time.